Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Whiteboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about containers and what containers are and some of the benefits of them. And so if you look at uh, where we've gone with virtualization and, and you know, the whole point is, is to have some layer of abstraction. And so if we look at traditional virtual machines, you have your, uh, say this is a, um, a server, could be a desktop, but you have your infrastructure layer and you have your um, host operating system, okay? And then with a virtual server uh, environment, you have this hypervisor layer. Now this could be a type one uh, or a type two hypervisor. So whether it's on bare metal or running on another operating system, you have uh, choices on your hypervisors. And then uh, you have your guest operating systems. So in any one particular virtual machine, if this is VM1, VM2, and VM3, you could have Windows running here, you could have BSD running here, Linux running here, and, and so on and so forth. And then, on top of your operating system, you have your, your, uh, your binaries, your libraries. So you have that across the board, binary, library, layer. And then, of course, you have your applications. So on any, on any, if, if it's about isolation and you're trying to isolate your applications, then on VM1, you would have app1 and then app2 and app3. And, and so this is, the, uh, this is the VM world, okay? And then uh, you have E, the container options and let's come over here for that one and uh, we can go kind of the same overall picture here that uh, the first two layers are the same you have infrastructure and you have your host OS and then the difference here is instead of a hypervisor, you have your container runtime. And so, you know, that might be your, your Docker daemon or um, LXC daemons or, or whatever, but this is your uh, your container daemon, whatever is controlling uh, the processes for your uh, container environment. And so here, instead of having your guest OS layer. Here you're going to use the host OS and, and share it amongst your environments. And so the difference here is that you end up with fairly lightweight containers that can use everything in the host OS. So your um, your Binary, oh, that's terrible. Uh, make that a little bigger so you can read it. So your binaries and libraries are going to be specific to the application that you're running, like you would deploy in a virtual machine, but now uh, packaged just for the use of the application, but with direct host OS access for, uh, for shared resources. And so, again, app one is here, and app two, and app three. And of course, we say app one, that could be a microservice of a much larger application suite, and that's actually one of the big benefits of containers is its modularity. So if we're looking at the differences between these two, and you can take this entire container, if we take this, let me, let me use a different color here. You could take all of this and you could drop that whole thing into one of these guest OS virtual machines. 
and then put apps one, two, and three in a containerized environment on a single VM uh, if you wanted to go crazy. And you know, from a development perspective, a lot of people do that. They'll have virtual machines that then they use uh, to build out their, um, their container systems. Uh, but, so if we're looking at the differences here, virtual machines are abstracting the physical hardware, turning uh, you know, one server into many servers. If we're looking at this, we're not making this more than one server, it's still just one server. We're just containerizing the applications so that uh, we're packaging code and dependencies, but that's it. Everything else is shared. And so if we're looking at size, uh, you know, a container, you're looking at a scale of megabytes, whereas with virtual machines, you're looking at the scale of gigabytes because it's got to have the entire host OS involved there. And whereas virtual machine is going to be faster than iron, uh, they're slow, slow ramp for startup. And, and this is, you know, near instantaneous. Talking a couple micro, a uh, couple milliseconds, and it's up. And so, uh, you know, some of the other things that um, benefits that you can look at between them, you know, you've got the small disk size, low overhead, fast boot, uh, the modularity that I was talking about, in that you could have uh, an app on a container, but you might have your database running in one container and your app uh, running in the other. And, and so if you look at patching, traditionally if you're in the mindset of virtual machines, you're like, oh, well, I've got I've to back up that, uh, that virtual machine and run those nightly backups. So if anything fails, I can redeploy the, the virtual machine from backup. And in patching, I'm going to patch that instance. In a container world, you're not doing any of that. You, you really nuke pave. You nuke a container that you have running and, and you pave it with whatever uh, you updated. So your container image is what you're going to update. So any kind of patches, any kind of uh, feature enhancements and all that, they're going to be updated here. And then you just deploy, and then you, you kill these and, and deploy new ones. So in a nutshell, that's what containers are. It's, it's just little, uh, little containers. And, and, uh, and the binaries and libraries dependent for that application. And so you don't have to worry about if I'm on my desktop and I've got Python 2.7 and if I deploy to a server out there in production and it might be on Python 3.6 and now everything doesn't work, you don't have to worry about that because your container image is going to detail all of the necessary packages uh, that you need for your app to run. And, and, uh, and so once that image is defined, you deploy image and, it, and it's good to go. So real short, real brief. Uh, any questions you have, drop them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you out there in the community.